Hey, I'm Skylar Woodward, and I'm two-time Moscone Cup MVP, and you're watching Railbirds TV. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jeremy Jones with Railbirds TV. And this is a round one match of the 2020 Derby City Classic. It's Efren Reyes racking the balls there and has won the lag over uh, Mike Medley uh, versus Mike Medley, excuse me. This is a round one match. You can see a couple of our sponsors, Diamond Billiard Products and Billiard Shopping Network. Good to see Efren back here at the Derby. Missed a few years. I mentioned it before that I'm sure these two guys had played uh, several matches, both one pocket and bank pool. Now Efren with opening scratch. And of course, everyone, if you play pool, you know Efren Reyes, but Mike Medley, a lot of people know him as well. He owns Michael's Billiards uh, in Cincinnati. Long time pool room. I think I played there first hmm, about 1991 or two. Now he's going to look at a double bank shot maybe here on the uh, 11 ball. And the good thing about this shot is, I mean, there's a little, there's, there's ways you got to protect the cue ball pretty well. That's the one tough thing about this shot. I think I would look at something a little more simple, especially with the bottom of the rack being so open and the six ball there. Got to really control the cue ball well. That'd be drawing it probably one rail on the back side of the 12, but man. But Mike's a pretty sharp guy, along with a great banker and player, but knows he's probably got to be aggressive here in some points against Efren. And right away he's given maybe a cross corner bank and if not a long railer on the on the fourteen. But I think the six goes. Great camera angle there. Pretty standard bank for a one pocket player. And Efren gets that first ball that he scratched that he owed from scratching on the break. I think he's got a little angle to get into the stack. If he doesn't have a whole lot, he'll go into there mildly. Okay, he had a lot of angles, so that's why you saw more speed. If you had less angle there, you'd probably try to just trickle one open and try and continue the run from there. But Okay, he doesn't want to land on the rail here. That could slow things down unless the 8 goes which he'll shoot at it. Uh, he'll go off the rack up the table for the ball near the side. Don't think he'll baby this one too much. Yeah, I like that. So he's pretty open here to just draw across the table and get the five next. Don't think he'll roll it. And nice shot. So Mike, with a prime uh, opportunity, you would think, after losing the lag, but getting ball in hand after an opening scratch by Efren, kind of just underhit the ball a little bit. And Efren's getting uh, quite a few from that cross corner bank he started with on the six. And he'll play for the. What is, I believe, the 10 ball just below the ball nearest the bottom rail. Cross corner bank. You may have to kill the cue ball a little bit here with some low left, kind of drawing it to slow it down and then let it spin across the stack. Oh, he went the other way and hit it pretty well. Just got to make sure there's no kiss shots here. 
And he, ooh, the ball coming on the spot even, yeah. So I'm not sure if that slipped Efren's mind or maybe the cue ball just got a little high on him. Okay, he's got a one ball shot and he's got a shot on the two as well. Thing about the two is I think he can hit it with a high ball and still carry the three ball downward a little bit. I think you kind of have to shoot the two to keep the, the run going, so he's pretty good on it now. In fact, the one you might think uh, would be a ball to save you to gain position on maybe a shot or two from now. So just a nice high ball, medium speed. Yeah, like that, try and carry the three down. And now here's that one ball I was talking about that he can play position on to really maybe do some real damage and get on out. He's got to be willing to come two rails with a little inside English. You can see there a great camera angle that the 12 and 13 both go. The 4 actually goes from some places. And really, as long as you spin, I, I, I don't think you're going to get straight in on the 1. You'll either have a drawover angle off the 1 to get behind those balls or maybe follow, you know, to, to the to the short cushion and spin behind those balls. So he's got to make one really nice shot with some inside English here. I uh, he let up on it. Didn't really get the carry uh, with the spin. So now he's pretty thin on this ball. So decisions. I'll tell you, he's got a kiss shot on the four that may be playable. Maybe the 13 clears the 10 out of there. He's going to scramble the 9 on the, what is that, the 12? Ooh, look at that. So that was a bank combo double kiss. And now he's still in a funny position here, though, because moving the 10 isn't easy. You don't get much on your side, and you can't give up a long railer on the 12. So what do you do? You kind of slowly move the 10 out and hopefully cover up the cue ball with the 13 and the 4. It's, it's touchy. Easy to give up a free bank here. Okay. Not a bad effort, actually. Kind of understood that there was a lot of ways to give up an easy shot, so he tried to swing one towards his side. I'd be a little worried of the 413 myself, but also the long railer is that ball got over the side pocket. I think he's got a pretty free long railer here. As long as he can reach it and hit it fairly accurate. Okay, now this one here, he could sell out the cue ball. Got to watch out. Really? Yeah, that's what I would have been worried about from that angle. It just looked like the you could sell out either a scratch or actually a shot on the 10, that ball near the side. Probably still a little unfortunate, but... So now here, does Mike... I mean, I, I think he's supposed to try to roll this ball in off the spot and get behind these two balls. I understand you lose the game from here, but... Pretty good opportunity. Well, excuse me, I'm I'm sorry. I forgot about the ball near the side. He should certainly roll the ball on the side, uh, near the side in his corner, and either follow down for the bank on the one, or if he felt like trying to gain position off the ten. But yeah, he's got to shoot the ball by the side. Roll down for the bank. Talked about earlier that Mike is a really, at one time, really really good bank player. This would be a big chance to steal game one. And also, Efren broke in game one. Okay, got that one down. Going to get a little high with the cue ball. Let's see if he decides to cut it a little bit and stiff it, maybe. Trying to get position. Uh, he kind of ignored position a little bit. Can't blame him. Uh, 
And that 413 combination is a little worrisome for for Mike. He's going to go ahead and bank at this, though, it looks like. Hit it pretty mm, good line, just a little light. Kind of was fortunate enough, didn't really pl make it playable where he could cross, cross corner this ball. I might cross corner this at those two balls on the spot or near the spot and just let the cue ball run. Yeah, I like that. I like that shot a lot. And it turned out pretty sweet. Now Mike could maybe cross corner of the four, but it's a dangerous shot sending the cue ball into that ball nearest Efren's pocket. So he'll just soft kick that ball. I believe it's the 15. Maybe the 12. Uh, that's going to be upsetting. You play good, you play a good game to get back in it, get a little a little lead at six to five, and lose the game on a simple shot. So Mike's gonna have to regroup because Efren should get these. Is he ki kissing this ball here? Okay, he went by him. And the camera can certainly fool you sometimes, especially on the pool table. So Efren with two needed to get get back game one. And the last ball is conceded. So Mike's going to break to the lower right pocket. Last couple shots, he's just hit a little light. You can see him struggling a little bit over there, and I hope everything's okay. This ball kind of got a little funny. He can get at the at the nine though, so probably do something with the nine. Could take a chance of banking it into the lower part of that ball near the side rail, that being the 10. And drawing the cue ball to the bottom rail and back up. Something like that. Can he get it? Hmm. All right, now he's leveled out a little bit more. Oh, wow, what a shot. So Mike can see a little bit of the five. Not sure he can really do a whole lot with it. May have to come off of the eight trying to go to the round, kick the ten away a little bit. This is touchy here. Very difficult. sure what the shot is here looks like he could kick out of it maybe he's gonna play a kick and stick kind of shot is that right on the two ball no oh, what a shot and what a perfect cue ball I mean he he's given up a cross corner on the five and you may see Efren shoot it because the balls Efren goes up to the middle of the end rail the balls are pretty doubled up here there's nothing wrong with this shot at all. It looks like, anyways. It's a little touchy, the angle. Okay, Efren's not going to mess around. Looks like he's hitting more of the bottom. Oh, no, he played the bank. I think that's the right shot, especially now. So I'm getting so good on the, on the two. He may have left the window on the nine, and I think he did, but it was long and straight, so... Friendly little kiss here. Is he going to get it? Mm, 
It's got a bank on the nine. I'll tell you, I have. Yeah, that combination looks a little steep, so he'll have to cross corner this nine ball, and I think come up for the ten or the or, or the six. Okay, so do you keep fighting here if you're Mike? Is shoot the ten into the nine, try and escape like that, or shoot the six into the nine, maybe holding your ball, or do you go for the cross corner on the six here, trying to get some? Don't think the 12 ball banks. That's the ball near the 8. You can see Ike Reynolds, another great player from Chicago, there in your screen. Yeah, this is this is funny when you got to shoot you from so far up the table, this 10 into the 9 and stun below another ball. And you don't know exactly... If the ten's going to come off the point and go back towards the eight or something like that, so that's why I'm saying, does he does he go ahead and play to try and get this game here by cross corner in the six? I don't think it's a bad bad play at all. Oh, he played another nice shot. With all the balls up there, you can learn something there. The way he played that one. Kind of forced Efren's hand to play probably off the eight here and pretty conservative. As you can see, Efren knows he's got nothing really on his side. So when it's like that, and he did real well there. Um, your opponent can get a lot of free shots. Okay, Mike should probably follow through that, is that the 14 ball there. Ball near the side pocket, Efren's side pocket on the left side of the table. I think that's okay. I mean, just follow down, try and get below the eight on the side rail. Well, he's going to move him up table as he cross. Oh, he's long railing this 10 ball. He's got to really do a lot to get sh shape. No, he's just moving him up. And the only reason I say maybe not there is because the ball's really laid in a nice way for for Mike. Efren only had a couple on his side. He could have removed one there. going to roll forward on this one. He's got to hit it decent, though. Could double out and leave a little cross-corner bank. Okay, he went for shape. I would have, too. Efren's in a good spot now, though, to shoot the three onto the ten and drop down to the bottom rail and really could make things kind of, kind of tough for Mike coming off this bottom rail with the cue ball froze. If he can get the cue ball froze here. Ball's all the way up in the middle. Now here's where you could get a, a nice shot at something across corner or a long reller or some type of trapping shot. same shot I was talking about earlier but when the balls were all on Mike's side now he's got to be careful he's going to leave a cross corner on the one that Efren's definitely going to look at where he can leave the balls doubled up and shape on the four if he makes it definitely a shot he's going to shoot it's just seeing probably around the first diamond on the top rail with the cue ball oh he didn't kill it he went to spin it and that was interesting to me it looked like he could have killed the ball um, being so close to the one, cut it and killed it behind that 10, 11, 3 and all that. As you can see, the 10, 11 doesn't go, the 4 doesn't go. 
Now he's left Mike where Mike could possibly play the 12. Probably needs to to keep a little heat on Efren. Try and score. Maybe bump the six into play. Wow. Efren kind of looked at the kiss shot there on the... I think that's the 14-3 ball in the middle of the table where he banks the three over and kisses the 14 towards his pocket. It's going to go towards the one, I think, so... May even draw this ball a little bit. Or just play it with speed like that. I think a pretty easy decision for Mike. He's just going to shoot the one into the bottom rail. Clearing the one and the three. can maybe bank at this 10 here. It doesn't really go with the one being there, but does he kiss off the 11 and scratch? Or he wants to go into the 11, maybe. Maybe run around the four with the cue ball like that. Hard to figure out what's going to happen, though. And So far, it's worked out, unless he's left a pretty good shot on the 10. See a little hand gesture from Mike there. He can definitely escape this somehow, I would think. Maybe cut in the 11 and run the cue ball back up table. Something like that. He could bank at the 11 trying to bring the ball back behind, but I don't think the, it's sitting right. He's going to send the 10 towards his pocket. Trying to get the cue ball back behind something, maybe double an effort up. I did pretty nice with the cue ball there. A sweet shot by Mike Medley. I think he needs to open the three and the, if he can see those and tickle that. What is that, the six ball there? Come down the in rail, opening those balls up. Yeah, I like that choice. I think he left it really kind of not very bankable for Efren. Maybe the three ball, but. Efren's just going to push this ball away a little bit. Got to be careful here. He could push it away and run the cue ball this side rail like this over here. Pretty safe and kind of mildly removing a ball, a playable ball. For, uh, you know, from Mike's side. Now, Mike's got a cross corner on the eight. It does bank. He's trying to see, do I want to play this bank, run the cue ball a couple rails up where he's standing now? No, playing pretty tight. Efren should definitely play this 11 back, I think. He's just going to move some more balls, but can't leave Mike across corner on the one, though. Guess he's not worried about it. Just swing the ball back over. Now the eight doesn't really bank, and if Mike keeps leaving Efren over there. Efren's going to get the balls where he's going to get a free shot here in a second. And he got one here on the one. up three to one here in game number two. I don't think that's going to get there. Huh? It's pretty decent. I oh, overspun that one a bit. 
hard to imagine you can do that sometimes. And it's now four to one here in game two. It's the first round match from the 2020 Derby City Classic. Now is Mike looking to cross corner of this? The way he's been playing, I doubt it. Yeah, he's just gonna kick and stick. Nice hit there. Efren just probably rolling 13, or is he gonna play the 11 down? He's gotta be careful here if he doesn't get this ball down by his hole. Sending the cue ball back behind them balls. Yeah, he could have problems. It worked out, but... And knowing Efren, I wouldn't doubt he played it. I hate to say that in a shot like that, but... It's pretty incredible. So he's going to play this combo. Mike's got to get something going towards his hole. Try and stitch the cue ball up. Going right into the 12, I think. Maybe trying to go all the way over. Yeah. The thing about going all the way over... There's nothing wrong with that, but uh, it usually is not what the shot is lying to do so much. Like it's, you're forcing the shot a little more. Uh, and also, that's actually where banks open up more for your opponent is when you bring the cue ball over more. I got a cross corner on the four if he doesn't like the 11 where he can draw the ball over to the side rail, kind of where he's standing, I think, and hold it up for a bank on the 11. I think. Thing is, he's got to either that or just commit to it and try and get some shape. Definitely a bank that Mike's a big favorite to make. Right, he's playing the cue ball. I think he got safe. Surprised Efren's not looking at the eight here. Just have a look at it. Maybe it's a little too thin to be able to bank the eight towards your hole and hold them up behind those balls. Or maybe that combo on the that stripe and the three is is playable. Oh, this is a surprise here. Oh, I see. Didn't turn out well, but he was trying to sweep that ball over and let the 13 escape as well, but he's going to give up a shot on the 13 and then a bank on the 11. And I believe that six ball up the table does go. So if he can get this 13 down and a nice angle on the 11 ball bank to send the cue ball up table, Mike could do some damage here. And got a little thin, but not bad, so he's going to have to spin this a bit. Maybe run the cue ball into the 8, something like that. If he just cuts it a lot, he doesn't, can't get shape, really. I wouldn't draw this into that ball. I would go ahead and let this run. That way I have a pocket speed on the object ball, and I can get rewarded with shape. Okay, he decided to play it thin. You see, it's very difficult to get shape playing it thin. You're kind of going into those balls. So, Efren, does he like this bank on the six? Can he really get something safe with the cue ball? He's got to have a real good speed, or he's going to give up a cut or a long railer on the 12. Hmm. Okay, so Mike's got to make a little bit of a shot on either the 4 or the 11. Naturally comes across, I think, in between the six and the fourteen, I believe. Oh, you hit it great. Well, that ball still banks from a lot of places, so he's okay. And now tied the game at four apiece. 
looking to take the lead here in game two. Just pop this in a little bit, stiff it in. I believe he's got a bank on the eight. May give up a combination though on the seven fourteen. Uh, not sure. Might be the fifteen ball actually. Just gonna move this lightly over. Oh, that was a little risky. I thought the way that it's just kind of hard to determine how the ball is gonna come off being so near the side and also with the ball hanging up in the corner. Thought it was real dangerous to maybe make one there. And then therefore one of them come on the spot. Not much you can do here, just Kind of lightly come across it. I mean, you could roll it, put it on the side rail, but yeah. The thing about that shot there is you're getting your opponent closer. I mean, you may get away with it, but you're getting them closer to whatever ball they want to shoot, and you're going to make them very accurate. Maybe he got away with this here, but I, I know the ball on the left side rail banks one rail, and I think Efren's supposed to shoot at that just because of his chances of making here so good. Is he going to try and spin this 12? I don't like that as much. I like him stiffing the 14 or shooting that 7. Yeah. Oof. So that worked out for Mike. Everything looked like he hit it pretty well and doubled the pocket and went over on Mike's side. So he's got a pretty routine shot and he's got a little bit of an angle. Should be able to at least get on another long rail bank. He's going to get two rail position here. Mike playing for two here in game number two. You can see Efren Ray is one game number one. And he's overcut that a little bit. The safer side, you can see it usually comes out to a double kiss when the speed is correct. Yeah, I don't know if he can avoid this one. He's got to kind of swerve into it a little bit. Yeah, he got the kiss. He's going to give up a couple cut shots, maybe a bank. So when I shoot this shot, I like to shoot it to where I'm just bringing the cue ball back to the end rail, maybe underneath for shape, kind of that speed. He got a little thin, but as long as the cue ball gets down there, you usually don't give up too much of a shot. And he got it down there, so Efren's going to have to probably play some type of, uh, ooh, I don't like this shot too much. I like him cutting the ball near his pocket, uh, that being Mike's pocket, and let it bank two rails and hit it with a high right ball and let the cue ball run two rails towards the three. This is okay also. But the thing is, Mike should cut at this ball. You know, it's not saying it's free, but it's worth it. It puts you to where you need one. Uh, the balls are up here, not totally out of play, obviously, but... I don't give him the chance to let him tie these balls up and get to where he can do something a little bit more. I like him cutting at this ball near his pocket. Unless he's really, really worried about hitting it so, so thick or maybe airing the ball, I guess, maybe. But I think he's supposed to shoot it.
Yeah, I for might bank this and draw to the side rail and up on top of the eight here. Get another bank on the three, maybe. If he makes it. Looks like he's hitting us with a high ball. Doesn't need that to go in the, in the upper right corner and come on the spot. That would hurt. But Efren's kind of got the balls to where he can remove these if this ball nears Mike's pocket if he wants now. Because he can protect giving up banks for the most part. Yeah, I would shoot through the eight here and push forward if I think if I was going to mess with these balls. Try and get maybe bank the eight between those two and get it on my side a little bit and just roll the cue ball up on the rail behind that stripe, something like that. I think he's giving up a good chance of giving up a shot here if he banks the three at his pocket. I mean, he could hit with a heck of a lot of draw and right. Oh, look at this shot. Oh, man. Efren's the man, I'll tell you that. What a shot. And he put some heat on Mike here. Mike can see this three ball, but just in case he couldn't, needs to get this one on his side a little bit. That brings the cue ball over correctly. Is he crossing this towards his corner? Okay. Yeah, that cue ball is going to be too high there and give up a cross corner, huh? Efren's not even looking at it, but. He's playing them both over again, trying to. Okay. Big shot for Mike. Thing here is you don't have to come all the way down. Just a nice medium roll. A little of the center of the table, something like that. Okay, he shot it, and I like that too. I think he still needs one. There's a couple of them kind of in play with that three and eight if he does cut at the seven ball, but. going to cut at this seven. I think that's the right shot. Just straight up the middle of the table with the cue ball. So we're tied at one apiece. And hello again, everyone. I'm Jeremy Jones with Railbirds TV. Coming to you. Uh, these are 2020 Derby City Classic One Pocket matches. This is round one. Efren Reyes and Mike Medley. Efren now back. They're playing uh, the tournament's Rack Your Own. No jump cues here. And that's all the all the uh, divisions. See, uh, Efren scratched on the break in game number one. We'll see if he if he decides to break to the same pocket, which was the lower left on your screen here. Okay. 
This is the second rack. Or this is the third rack. Third rack, it's your break. One to one, his break. Great. It's going to stick with the same pocket, and I would. I'm a right-hander as well, and I like the lower left if the table's playing equal to both pockets or somewhat. Now, Mike's been playing pretty tight, so if he can get a look at this 11, I wouldn't doubt he just pretty quickly shoots this 11 away. Maybe into the one lightly, yeah. You don't want to go crazy with that one and blast it. Let him move away kind of calmly. It calmly doesn't get you in too much trouble. Did real well with the cue ball, too. That real flat angle, so. Everett might take a chance going, kicking at this three with going off the rack and going up table with the cue ball here. Like that. Thing is, there was a lot of separation between the balls, so you had to hit it with a bit more speed or really right on the button, right on the nose uh, to get one going towards your hole much. Maybe a little frustration there after losing game number two. Pretty fortunate to get this 9-1 doubled up. You could hear him say nothing, really. And tell you, hmm. Real touchy unless you're sitting real nice on that 9-1 to be able to do something with that. So he's looking at the two ball. Not sure what to do with the two ball. I mean, you could cut it a little bit towards the five and run the cue ball up. Dangerous to give up a little bit of a bank doing that. Is he trying to keep the cue ball into the stack somehow still with off the two? Yeah, that was a dangerous shot. I'd just because he went into those balls there in the middle. Not saying I, I, I don't get what he was wanting. He was wanting something on his side. He's wanting to slow the process of effort being able to think I can do pretty much whatever I want. But you see the 10 and the 3 the way they were. And he went right in between those into another ball that was sitting there and hit just right. A 3 could have got kicked out for a bank pretty easily, but... So I wouldn't doubt if game three is a pretty long game. And, but Efren's going to do this a lot against Mike. And against a lot of a lot of players, not just uh, just someone he feels like he's a favorite over. Now what's this angle on the four look like? Can he shoot the four and, and kind of let the cue ball go into the the 14 there and, and and maybe it's okay hitting the top of it and slides over for position and safe and because because mike doesn't mind spinning his ball like a light spin shot he's going to play the eight but does the eight go or maybe he's just playing safe all the way around playing for a real long game yeah that's what he's doing Let's see that right side's cleared up more. And when you don't get that cue ball buried down here, now Efren's going to look at something like that two ball up table. So it's real important if you're going to play that tight position and knowing that you don't have much on your right side rail that you got to get it, uh, get it, get the cue ball down to the bottom cushion. Maybe the two ball's no good. But Efren's going to want to test Mike from up table. Looks like now. That's exactly what Mike wanted, I would think. quo keep to the status quo here and play pretty tight nice cue ball coming back and if 
Griffin going to kick this 11 ball here and try and slide up to the end rail. Uh, looks like he's shooting off the three, I think. We'll see what Mike's thinking about. Probably just knocks the 10 away. Falls forward with the cue ball. Does he have some type of bank on the 12 he can play here? Well, this is a pretty big mistake by Efren if he does. Yeah, he does for sure. Look what he's done real nice with the cue ball too. He's given up a shot on the 6, but it's not easy. Efren can fall down with a lot of follow English down for a bank on the 12. I think Mike thought he was going to he hit that ball a little thinner than he wanted. He wanted to really come into the the seven ball there with the cue ball, taking a real good chance at making that bank. Efren can self kick the the twelve. It's it's touchy. I think he can shoot between the three and the eleven and get to the side rail, trying to just lay on top of the twelve. It's a shot you really got to have playing one pocket. To get you out of a lot of touchy situations. Even though if you hit a little off, you could scratch. But is he going to play this and hold him up on the six, or is he going to go ahead and play the six? Like play this combination, just roll it down because all those balls are doubled up. I think. Yeah, like oh, he just played this lightly, anyways. Well, that was a great shot because I, I think the eight may have had a piece of the pocket. Got a couple of shots. He can bank the 14 cleanly. Soft kick the 12. Perfect speed. Now we'll see if Mike wants to get in this upper left-hand corner. Uh, lower left-hand corner on your screen right now, but... On Efren's side, yeah, upper left if you're looking at it now. And see if he can get that 12 where it's not bankable. Get it covered up some kind of way. He's a little worried about that 7-8 combination. Okay, he's going to just roll through this 7 ball. Is that what he's doing here? Trying to get him up behind that five. Efren's got to bank at the ten here if he wants to shoot it. Another perfect cue ball. And I think he's got a playable combination on that side rail, so... I don't think you'll see Mike do much but roll through that five, maybe getting him back on top of the four, something like that. Mike's been keeping it pretty simple, not really challenging Efren too much. And I tell you, he's got it one to one. That's pretty good. Now that bank on the nine, what does that look like? And he's doubled up on everything, so he can really stun this ball over, I think, and uh, not give up a shot. He doesn't have to play for the real kind of trap. Try and make this bank here and get behind the 11. Or not the 11, excuse me, the 13, which is near Mike's side pocket. Yeah, I believe the, the 12 ball nearest Mike's hole is double, doubled up with the 13 and the 7. Doesn't like it though. 
Besides not being able to cue it with a touch of right English, maybe because the four is there, it sure looks like it sits pretty nice to me. And I do think both those balls are doubled up. He's going to hit with follow, and nothing wrong with that either. And kill it maybe with a little inside. Oh, it came off pretty straight. He stunned it. But there was something there that we couldn't see on the camera that Efren was more worried about. Like to like to know about that one. Okay, he's just going to cross the four or the eight over. One of the two, probably the four. Really good cue ball that time. Real real important too because he knows that those balls on the side rail are still doubled up. So he doesn't want to make it easy for Efren to get something going towards his pocket and get in that in that upper corner again. Effort in conversation. You're going to play this ball over? No, I'm just going to tap it lightly. Probably try to get this eight maybe going over there towards the side. Not towards his pocket, but towards his side a little bit. Okay, I don't think he really left effort much. Maybe a two railer on the seven. It's gotta follow down. He's nothing wrong with leaving him long and straight on the twelve if he's froze on the rail, but otherwise I don't think you're gonna do much here, yeah. Really re rearranged him there, that being Efren. Did he give up a free bank here on the seven? Mike's played pretty pretty snug. I guess he can't quite hold it without giving up a cut on the nine. If he could go forward here, that would be all right if he could get by the 11. Watch it here, Efren. Not going to take much time moving the 12, but something like leaving Efren the 14 there over by the 8 on the long rail. Efren a little upset that went up in the corner. You want to see Mike have to shoot down, down table with the cue ball, and now Mike will be able to roll on the ball of the on the spot, that being the 12. May dig on the cue ball here. Didn't really leave much for effort. Maybe a three ball he could sh bank at. Ball's a little bit doubled up on the side rail there. The 12 and the 7. Tell you what, the more I look at it, maybe he can kill this with little English too and really get up that side rail behind the 13. Took some time to shoot that 9 ball earlier. Mike's got some choices here. He can draw off the 14, shooting that in, up into the one and whatnot. 
come draw off the seven, opening that side up a little bit. Doesn't really want to remove ball. And it doesn't really even have to draw off the seven. So I think that's the shot I'm shooting probably. Maybe the 14 because it really is one of the balls that Efren can play. If you remove that, I don't think the eight and four are too playable. Yeah, he's just going to play real smart with the cue ball. Again, those balls being doubled up, though. Efren may bank at that three now. Or even the maybe the 15 ball there. It looks like he's playing something. Well, it's going to be a little, little tight. Mike's going to take a pop at this three ball if he doesn't shoot something else. He's looking to see if this 13 passes, but if it's any kind of tight, it must not be because he's shooting at it. Looking to see how he can play the cue ball. Ooh, almost got a little friendly bump on the four, which would have opened up the eight. I think he can move this 11. If not, he can kick to the back rail. Just bumping it up towards the three. Oh, he hit it thin. Watch out, side pocket. He's looking at maybe the two ball. Can he see the uh, 15 and the 11? I don't think so. Got to draw this a little. That's why you had to hit it with a little more speed. Turned out pretty nice considering there was a lot of collisions. Not sure the one bank so easily cross corner. May play it anyways if he can draw the cue ball back like on top of the 11. If it plays easily, though, he'll just hold and maybe get up behind the three, something like that. Oh, he got it plenty long enough. Doesn't want it to get on that side rail, though. That's going to hurt a little bit. I'm going to be able to spin this ball. Should be able to at least get position on the two. Maybe get, get him up there and get him trapped a little bit. He's going to look around. Knowing there's balls doubled up. Oh, he can play a two two ball shot towards his pocket here. Watch. Yeah. Speed's important though. He doesn't want them both to get to the end rail. shot by Efren. He can shoot the two aggressively and just follow through. He's got to ignore where the two's going. Just play all cue ball up behind the 10. Key to this shot is don't baby it. Don't let up on it. I'm not meaning you're going to really fire it and shoot it with a ton of speed, but make sure you get through the ball with the stroke and you're hitting the ball pretty full, so you get to go down table, you know, three diamonds, so you can imagine, um, you know, about medium speed. Don't think the two really banks towards this hole and playing the cue ball safe. 
Now you can see that two's closer to the rail than I thought, so this makes it a little more touchy, and even more so, don't let up on the stroke. Can he play a 12 7? Eh, that's, that's no good, actually. He played it real firm. So it was taking a bit of a risk there, but he also knew that with that ball being close to the rail, that if he kind of eased into it, it could catch a double kiss, keep the cue ball right there, sell out at maybe a combination on the 14-10 or a cross corner on the ball that was on the side row a moment ago. I think it was the, uh, the 11, I believe. No, it was the 1, excuse me. from trying to get him on the back of them balls right like that so good with the cue ball opening up the ball on the side rail not letting him see the ball on the side rail he can play off the four drawn down but he's got to be real good with that because he could easily give up a bank on the 10 and he's got to deal with still having a bunch of balls uh, doubled up on the side rail that Efren can really take advantage of it uh, on his next shot as well. So difficult, difficult here. Do you shoot through the four and put him up behind the three maybe? Uh, at least you're attacking a little more than trying to, you know, escape all the time. And not, you know, something like that, banking the four over. Yeah, if you left him the two ball bank though, He's got the 11 ball cross corner bank. Efren's really got a lot of choices here. Don't think he'll mess with the five ball. He's got a bunch of, a couple cross corners he can play on the 11 or the, I believe that's the 13 ball. Or no, that's the six, excuse me, near it. I don't think Efren's supposed to shoot at this cross corner, I believe. I know he can make the five. I, I think it's shootable, but... In the tournament here, it's, I believe the 13 is a makeable bank. Uh, you know, four out of ten, but it's safe all the time. He's going to play maybe something else here. Maybe play the other one, the other stripe there. Oh, he hit it nice. He hit it nice. So Mike really can't afford to come up with the cue ball, but he can't really afford that to let him see the two either. I think he can see the two, and I think Efren will bank it across and play the cue ball up in the middle of the end rail. Don't think he plays this at his hole so much. Yeah, I just play right up in the middle of the end rail. Maybe even slide towards the eight, something like that. Oh, he went for the make. And the one thing is if Mike isn't shooting much from the end rail, well, Efren's going to continue to put him there. And that's the issue. Very hard to continually just try to play safe and move from the end rail. You really have to shoot at some time or another, and I th think this one's laying okay. All right, he hit it sweet. It, did he hit enough? Okay, Efren can play the two into the one. Maybe play the cue ball by the two into the one, but I'm not sure there's much there for that. But he can play, come off the 14 ball, kiss the cue ball into the one. Not sure what he's looking at here. I 
Hmm. Not sure what he was trying there, folks. Mike's got a big pocket here. He doesn't want to contact the one, though, really. Because you can see at that speed he hit it. But he hit it pretty firm. The one would have banked up and not had a shot, so... He's got to draw his ball here. You can see this is game number three. It's a race to three. It's round one of the 2020 Derby City Classic. It's Efren Reyes and Mike Medley. It's three to two in the ball count and one to one in games. Interesting he played this, uh, especially with the, bringing the cue ball up. Now you're kind of not getting, if you're going to play the 12 back into those balls, you really want the cue ball to be going up table, maybe to the upper, you know, near the 11 balls, something like that. So you'd hit this with a top right English. You don't want to keep the cue ball down here near these balls because you can't determine where they're all going to be. So I think you want to go up near the 11 with the cue ball here. Top right English, kind of a mild pocket speed, I think is okay. Oh, he played the stun there to try and get up there. And when you play that, you're hitting much harder rather than running it with English. And therefore, if you catch one of them full, well, you lose the speed of the object balls. But there was something there that Mike really liked the way it's laid. So that's why he played it that way. Okay, this is a two rail kick on the three if you if you like that shot. Maybe he can bank this. Can he bank it? I thought the two had him snookered at first. No, he played it over mildly and what a shot. Perfect with the cue ball. And up four to two now. Now here, if this isn't laying good, just draw back and bank the two and run the cue ball. Looks like he's going with a high ball and maybe he can cheat it out. Okay, he didn't do much. Maybe the two railer is better. But again, you really want to be able to follow your ball up table if you're shooting the two railer. Ooh, and I think maybe he can. A little short, trying to get a lot out of that cue ball, getting it back up table. And I don't blame him there. Effort maybe play the two railer on the 11 here and stick him on the 8, trying to open, get something over on his side. Maybe not all the way towards his hole, but... Looks like he's cutting this. These tables have definitely broke in. Had the Banks division first. This is the first round of the one pocket. This is Railbirds TV. I'm Jeremy Jones, bringing you some 2020 matches from the Derby. A tight one here, and Efren's going to get to keep that one, I think. I don't think Mike will take a chance trying to get that one out, especially with a 5-2 uh, lead in the ball count. Maybe Efren can bank at the 3 or the 11. Oof. Both of them look not so great. But the player gets a little better perspective, that's for sure. Oh, he hit it sweet. Still came out on him, though, I think, and gave up a shot on the 10. Now, Mike's a little elevated over that... Uh, I believe it's the 11, but not taking much time. Can get to where he needs one pretty easily. Maybe get out. I oh, hit it nice. He's going to get some type of bank, especially when you get close to it like that. 
it's a little dangerous because you may over hit and not get a shot at all but when you get close to it you can really manufacture the type of uh, spin you need or throw or maybe holding the bank up he can even run the cue ball here if he wanted no he just played it simple and I don't blame him gets him to where he needs one and he's got a bank on the 11 so after losing game number one I think now Mike a big favorite to win two in a row was complaining of a little bit of uh, breathing problems there in the beginning of the match so you could see him kind of catching his breath a little pretty well and gave it a chance to go and kind of direct an effort on what he's got to do and that's always good when you got the lead probably crosses this over and comes straight back down the table with the cue ball kind of playing the 11 over to his side near the 8 and the 13. And the, oh, he played it full, and there was a little bit of a miss hit, I think, there. You can see the left English he had on it. So maybe just kind of spun in the, to the ball a little early, catching it thick. Efren will give this one a pretty good go, I think, cross corner. Hit it great, and he may have held the cue ball enough for a long reel bank on a, what I think is the 7 ball. Another one here he can cut at, cut bank it. I think it'll stiffen up now. He's got a draw across this ball, so I think he beats this the kiss. If he goes with a high ball, watch out for the scratch. Oh, he did beat the kiss. And he got it in a little bit of a funny position. So Mike's going to have to move this 11 and let the cue ball run away as well. He kind of killed it, and that was not bad. Reference probably banks the 11 again, since he's kind of close to it. Close enough to it, anyways. This one, the same thing, just draw out of it a little bit. Oh, he played it the other way, and he's got to watch out from giving up a pretty nice bank for Mike. Okay, I think this cue ball got in a decent position for Efren. Michael just cross the 11 over. Don't want to take a chance. And this is where if you may ease this or you may run it all the way down past the spot because you could make a ball in that opposite corner. So he played it much easier, lighter speed. I like that. Now Zephyrin played the 13 into the rail off the 11 towards his pocket with a high ball. Playing both across. Oh, no, he just played it light. a mistake there. Surprising one too from Mike. Efren really could go for this trying to make the 13 and keep the cue ball right there in the pocket on the upper side of the pocket. Or he's just going to play the 8. Maybe the other one's too steep. Uh, it's going to be a little short. Okay, does Mike shoot at this 3-railer? Quite possibly. Well, he shot at it. 
Wow, what a shot. And takes game three away from Efren Reyes, and Mike will be breaking in game four. Pretty impressive stuff by Mike. To Mike, he broke towards the lower right hand corner pocket. Most of the guys that are right handers and the table's pretty standard to both pockets, they'll break towards the lower left. But if you, for some reason or another, you know, there's a, usually a side you hit them the break better on. You'd like to hit them both as well as you can, but it seems like there's always a side that you tend to favor and get a better outcome from the break. So that's worth something as well when you're making your decision. I'll tell you what, though, Mike's in as good a position as he could have asked for to start this match, having a chance to break the balls here in game number four uh, to win the match, maybe. I'll tell you, Efren's got to be careful right from the gate. Anytime your opponent has that a ball that close to the pocket. He's got a couple different shots here. He can play off the four ball, banking the four back towards his hole, go three rails trying to get behind the six. He can shoot through the 12 and get up underneath the one. But if he doesn't get behind the one, say he bumps the one here or something. Yeah, like this. This could be real big problems. For, ooh, he's giving up a bank on the 12. A bank on the four and a bank on the one ball. And almost a spin shot on the six. Wanted to get to that rail on that one. And Mike's not going to fool around here. He's going to take a chance uh, on this long railer. And he's got a decent sized pocket. Maybe the six is helping him out a hair if he misses it. Just should slide straight over though. Yeah, like that. He turned it back nice. And he's got one hanging over his pocket. So, Efren, though, in a position he can do something here, playing the four into the one and bringing the cue ball up table. Oh, he played into the stack. Mike's got it. options here. I would drop below the 11 here, I think. But you got to want to get this 12 to your side. He's going to draw him back on the balls. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Everyone's good. Does he have a long road kick at the 1? Yeah, this isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. He's not taking much time here, so he's got to be careful. He's, Efren, yeah, Efren may play off the ball off the top of the stack and get him up behind the six here, trying to mildly start opening the balls. And uh, So you got to be real careful with that shot there that you get all the way over there to the side rail because you, you're still leaving the kick shot on the six, but that's not as big a deal as Efren trying to open the balls and getting you behind the six. So we'll see how it plays out. That ball spotting there may have helped things. Efren made two real kick the six now. Doubt it, but.
Yeah, I'm not sure what he's looking at. He can see the six ball. Yeah, I think he's. this is a good shot here. Try and keep that position for a moment. You want to you wanna keep that six and three to where you can... Oh, okay. Almost really gave it up there. But you want to keep that six and three where you had a few more shots to possibly get behind it doing some real damage. Mike may spin the six ball in here. The more I look at it, he's a right-hander, so he can reach it. He's cutting at this ball. I don't think that's going to hurt him much. I may inspect the stack a little bit, but it doesn't look like much to shoot at there. So he'll just drop this in and lay right there. I wouldn't try to get on the three myself. I just stay right there where the six is at. Yeah, that's fine. So Mike got two here now off of his break. And thing is, just imagine the cue ball being in the pocket there versus coming down towards that bottom rail. Well, that angle is a lot harder to deal with coming off that 14 ball and spinning up behind the 11. Now it's a little bit more possible. Mike's got to be careful here, though. He's coming off the two, crossing it over, and maybe trying to run the cue ball. Easy to give up shots doing that type of shot there. Efren's going to cut this ball and go up and down the table, I believe. Couldn't see him passing up on this 11. Or maybe he can't come up and down. Maybe he's got to try and go into the 8 with the cue ball. It's close. Oh, he did go up and down. Now, is it going to give him any reward we'll see Ooh, maybe the 310 quite possibly it's close and maybe not okay he's just gonna roll on the two ball not sure what happened there. Not sure if he hit the 12 or if he miscued and didn't didn't hit a ball at all. That's necessary, really, but I wouldn't doubt that Efren did hit the ball and he just doesn't want an argument, so that's why he laughed, I think, uh, because he thought he could see the two, but he was actually stuck to the 12, but maybe not. Gotta love their competitive spirit, all these guys, though. Now, does Efren play this two ball aggressively? Does he double bank the three, maybe? I 
don't think I think this is the shot I like somehow the two ball just even if he plays it aggressively and mildly just because it's the only ball on his side he's not going to be happy with that he wanted to get that cue ball to the low rail Mike's a very experienced creative player so giving him some kind of look at the four ball here could really be a problem He always already made one or two kind of trick shots, uh, kissing bank kissing balls in. Yeah, I wouldn't. He's look, surveying because there is some options there, but it sure looks like the four is a very playable shot, whether you move the four eight away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he's behind the stack and still with a two nothing ball count lead, that being Mike, and a two one lead in this race to three. 2020 Derby City Classic one pocket division around one match. I'm Jeremy Jones with Railbird TV and my friends uh, kind of up against the ropes a little bit here down two to one. It's in a decent position here the way the balls lay, but Mike's definitely trying to see if there's something he can get at that 12 while still playing the cue ball safe. He can kick behind the 12, which I think that's what he's going to do. He hit that pretty hard. I thought he would play because if you come into it how you want, I kind of think you might have a good, decent chance of scratching. So I thought he'd just lag behind the 12, and if he didn't hit it, he didn't hit it. But now Efren's going to try and swing between the, I think, between the 13 and the 2 there. Yeah. I think he can throw the 13 in from there, even with some draw, I believe. It's about five balls down from the spot or so. Okay, can he throw this ball in? Can he get the three up underneath the two enough to throw the 14 in? Maybe. If so, the three may come up. The two may come up also and open some balls up for him. Must be a scary shot, the 13, then. Because I don't think this is a definite to throw in. Oh, it was. Okay, a nice little kiss there. Got a cut shot on the three. May have developed the combination there. On the 13, it's close. If he shoots the three, probably he's going to come into this with a little inside English. Unless there's a, a three ball combination on the 6 5 10 that he likes. Okay, he's going to play something like that. Or maybe the, the ball on the spot goes now. Uh, is that the nine? It's just below the six. Oh, the three ball combination. Okay. Maybe the nine ball plays. Efren needs three. Oh, 
he can get a lot of that ball. He hit it with a straight draw English probably. And get out here. This ball should tickle the five ball also, I think. Yeah, a little bit. He got up enough for the six. I'm not sure if the nine goes, but maybe the seven goes as well. I know it did open up. So Irvin's going to get out here to tie this match up at two games apiece. Boy, he got a lot out of that. Not going to be too happy with that. <laughs> you can see a little smile there from Efren. Just float this in. Not really even selling out, I don't think. There you go. Efren Reyes ties our match at two games apiece. And we'll be breaking off in game number five. This is Railbirds TV. Jeremy Jones. This is the first round of the 2020 Derby City Classic One Pocket Division. It's Efren Reyes and Mike Medley. Efren Reyes, of course, known for everything in the game and all around the world. Mike, a pretty well known guy in the Midwest and a lot of areas of the country. Owns Michael's Billiards in Cincinnati. Efren doesn't put much speed into the break sometimes, really just trying to play the cue ball. But that turned out turned out all right. He's got a doesn't have much on the top of the stack to work with at all to drop behind the five. Can't soft kick the five so easily without giving up a shot on the on the one or the twelve, possibly a bank. So touchy here for Mike. Can't really roll out behind the five either, so. He's got to be real careful here. He can kick bank the five. It's not laying bad, actually, to go up into the seven with the cue ball. It's really not. Well, it's going to spin past it. I like being a little more aggressive, trying to hit the seven myself. and Just because when the five's that f high up, it's very hard to, to manage coming across it, getting it away from Efren's hole enough to where Efren can't shoot it, and... Uh, being able to hold the cue ball up underneath the seven. So I like the shot, though, I think. Okay, Efren will just bump this nine ball here, trying to open the four. Doesn't want to get too elevated. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe two straight. We'll see. Drawing this between them balls. Yay. Well, that's going to lengthen out our case game here in this match for sure. If he'd drawn that ball clean, he uh, may have gotten that one and dropped on another and opened the balls up and gotten on out. But now he's got to be really careful. I think he could one rail kick underneath the one without wor too much worrying, unless this 14 has him where he can't get to the side rail. Okay, he's going to three rail kick behind the one, dropping him that way, and that's a nice safe safe play. I thought that's what he was looking at, anyways. The one rail kick on the one, though, it's really hard to scratch, it looks like. But this is pretty safe as well, so he'll hit before the side just a little bit. Spin this with a lot of left English, catching the fourth rail on the right long rail, right before the one, and dropping down below it. Really playing it safe, and I think that's actually the correct uh, correct shot, especially hill-hill tournament, tournament format kind of pool. Gave up a nice kick on the nine here. Really hard for me to pass this one the way the stack is laying. 
The nine could hit the bottom of the 12, 12 hit the 10. They go towards the hole that way. Really, the cue ball is going right into the 13 and the five. And I believe that's the 15 ball that's right there as well. And you should judge kicking and hitting the nine. You can hit, you know, just anywhere on the top half of it. Anywhere coming upward on the nine really sends the cue ball into the stack. You can be nice and aggressive. Really put a lot of heat on uh, on Efren there. Yeah, the kick on the nine here. Definitely the shot, in my opinion. Oh, he went at it, though. He was... Wow! Didn't see that. Didn't see that. Now he's got an awkward one. Can he reach it? He's going to reach in for the bridge, but this is going to take a steady hand over those balls. At least he's got a little angle. Maybe he can just go right into the nine and not worry about selling out. Not much of a cut there. He could almost draw out past the nine, but he's going to go ahead and play into the nine. I don't blame him with the bridge. Oh, he hit it sweet. He hit it sweet. So Mike Medley now 2-2 two -two in the case game and a little chip shot on the one. He's got a cross corner bank on the nine if he doesn't want to draw the ball for shape, but you would think he's drawing the ball for shape here. Stay off the rail with the cue ball. I might come all the way out to the center of the table here. I was just looking at that shot. That What if he goes in and lets the stroke out? I think the 6 goes, the 13 goes, the 11 certainly goes. But he's got enough angle here to go right between. Oh, he's jammed it. That's going to hurt. So Mike got a lead for a moment here in game number 5. It's 2-2 two to two in a race to 3. Carried that ball over, and he's got a shot on the six as well. And for being jacked up, this is one he should still make. He's real close to it. Okay, now four to three, Efren. That's going to hit the four. Oh, okay, just by it. It's going to get pretty straight on the four, even the angle going away from uh, where he needs to get position on the on that 13 ball in the middle of the table. Maybe the 11. Oh, he can play that stripe instead, trying to get up behind the two and kick that out maybe where he's pointing there. A lot of choices here. He could shoot the four and drop down for the bank. Oh, he missed it. Oh, and he opened up those balls on the side rail, so... Mike Medley now only needs five. In a great position here with a little thin, little bit of a cut shot on the 11. Cue ball ran a long ways on him. So he's going to have to t take on a long shot on the three or a long shot on the two. Could do some other things if he wanted, but I'm not sure of this shot. Is he moving the 12 out of the way for position? He is. He's level now. Yeah, he hit it a little thick. Probably as much he made it the ball grab a little bit more. Uh, when you're close to the ball, it doesn't have a lot of turn, room to like turn over the cue ball. You know, really gain some revolutions and 
therefore acts like a skid a little bit more in my opinion. Efren trying to clear his mind after a big miss there, really kind of get a stranglehold on this case game, and now he's in a battle. He hit that great. He's going to get a long railer on the four that he's not going to pass up on, drawing the cue ball back. thing here is he won't make the cue ball kind of like, you know, draw back quickly, kind of like a slow draw. That way it'd be really accurate on the four ball. Okay, Mike's got decisions. I'm not in love with the four at all, really. Oh, maybe it does bank. I thought the 12 kind of had it covered up. Hard. If it does go, it's hard to pass up on. Excuse me. But I thought the 12 was kind of in the way. And Now, there's two ways to play this. You play the 12 into the 4, trying to get something on more on your side, or you come across this lightly, banking the 12 up towards the 13, like that. Doesn't want to make it, though. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but... Okay, the four is not very bankable here for Efren. So he could shoot through the 14 here. Playing the 14, two rails to his side. Right, he's going to come back with the ball, cue ball. It's really nice speed with the cue ball. Efren's got to cut this ball back. This is dangerous here. I, I think I might level out here. I don't know. This is tough. This is touchy. He's going to elevate. Got to be real careful not to give up a shot here. Okay, he did real well as far as trying to hold the ball on that side rail. Okay, shooting at a looks like a bank combination. I don't think it goes cleanly. Yeah. Just a hard one to shoot at. I mean, especially because kind of felt like the balls were sitting pretty nice for, for Mike. Mike's a really good banker and moves really well overall, and I just don't think he's going to... Uh, I think he's got a good fighting chance with the way the balls were laying, but... This is a touchy one here. Kind of got to pop it and trust the cue ball stunning while you're still hitting it with a little speed. Um, can't really hit it lightly and control everything you want. You got to just kind of trust it. The, the, hitting it a little more firm, the bank on the four. I think this is a okay play trying to remove both these balls. Oh, he's going to play a light again. So we'll see if... if Mike decides to play that bank combination, but now the 12 has gotten out to where it may bank. And that's why if I was Efren, I was so close to that, I would have banked that into the four trying to get the cue ball in a decently safe position and getting a ball on my side. Okay, he overcut it too much again. Cue ball really ran on him there. So Efren's got a bank on the four if he wants to try and win the match with it. He can slide the cue ball up. He's close enough to it. He can play it with a lighter speed to have the four hovering over the pocket if he misses. Uh, looks short. And he didn't get it over the pocket. And he may have given up. He definitely gave up a, a 13 that banks long rail. Maybe a 12 ball that banks cross corner. Is this easy to get out of the kiss here? 
with a high ball. Oh, you hit it great. On the pure stroke there. I think he's just going to remove this four ball. I don't think he'll play it towards his pocket. He may. Yeah, I like that better. went a long ways almost went in that upper corner would have been not a good thing for Mike Cross corner bank, excuse me. And a pretty good one. I think it may have gotten a little funny, but I think Mike can handle it here with a little spin. Kind of got a spin into it with a little left. Does he go by it with right? Yeah, he went with left. Watch outside pocket. Yeah, and he had to kind of manufacture beating the kiss there and Anytime you do that, it seems like the cue ball's tracking not always right towards the pocket, but somewhat anyways, either towards that side or that upper corner or two rails out coming at another corner. Okay, it looks like everyone's going to draw this ball. It's surprising. I thought he would pull the cue ball over a little bit and go one rail into the back of the 13 with the cue ball. Maybe he's still doing that with a high ball. No, he's drawing it. Or, or stunning it, maybe. Yeah. So he's gotten to where he needs one. He's got a two-reeler here that goes. Wants to shoot at it. Probably doesn't, but... He can do a little something with the cue ball. Save two, I believe. It, yeah, it looked like it... It was playable. Doesn't want that to go on the side there. So now Mike's got his hands full and trying to get three balls before Efren gets one. And the thing about that situation is now the four's out of play, but a lot of times whenever you develop the first shot, you're playing some type of shape, shape for the second ball. So you're not as big an underdog as people think. Okay, now that ball coming on the spot. We'll see what happens there. And good thing Mike ran the cue ball past that, past that spot, or else it uh, could be a straight in, straight in four ball for Efren to win the match. Is he going to one rail this with a lot of inside English? It's a little steep. Could get away from you. Efren doesn't like to pass up shootable shots in this position. Oh, he played the three-railer. And did he make it off the ball? Wow. Whew. This is one you you know you can stiff it in, but when it comes to you know game time match play, uh, and you got to come with this one, it's a little tougher than it looks. So it looks like Mike's gonna play sick. Oh, he tried to stiff it in. He's gonna get a kiss here with the cue ball. Well, it's gonna give up a bank regardless. And this one he can stiff in, draw out of the kiss, uh, stiffen it, or he can cross it over with a little high ball, maybe a little high left. Kind of up to him. I like the high ball myself. Seems to at least hang the ball most of the time. And Efren Reyes, ladies and gentlemen, wins in round number one, three to two over Mike Medley, and one heck of a match for, for Mike. And uh, I'm sure both these guys are going to look forward to keeping on playing in the one pocket and improving. Uh, for Railbirds TV.
I'm Jeremy Jones, and thanks for tuning in from the 2020 Derby City Classic. Good night.